Hello to the Open Metadata community and thanks to the Open Metadata team for giving us this platform to talk about uh, our journey, hoping that it uh, it will help your Open Metadata as a whole and uh, everybody using it. Um, so we, Antoine and I are working so at Gorgeous, so I'm going to first talk about a little bit what we do at Gorgeous, and then we're going to talk about the stack, how, what it looks like, what are the tools that we use, the types of volume that we deal with. Uh, we'll go over some technical details uh, and implementation, and uh, yeah, then at the end we'll give you like some overall feedback on uh, on our journey and the and the tool. So is it going? So what do we do at Gorgeous? So Gorgeous is uh, now completely pivoted into a conventional AI platform for uh, CX, so customer experience in general. Um, basically, we now uh, we try and automate a uh, conversation for our clients and their shoppers. So we now power over a billion conversation with uh, 275 million shoppers worldwide. That's a lot of it's a lot of conversations. Um, and all of these conversations have to go somewhere. So <laughs> they're being dealt with uh, with a huge stack uh, that we kind of handle. Uh, so we actually handle the internal data analytics at Gorgeous, uh, which is a bit separate from the product analytics, which is responsible for the reporting for our customers. And uh, on our end, we do all that's internal analytics. So um, everything that's that has to do with business reporting, we power and we platform. So uh, we deal with all of the infrastructure, all of the flows, all of the ETL uh, pipelines, all of the streaming pipelines now uh, into a warehouse we, we deal with. Um, so let's uh, talk about how that looks like in numbers. Um, so this is uh, how uh, the stack looks like in numbers right now. So uh, on the product side, we currently have 250 tables in production, which are basically replicated through CDC uh, pipelines using mostly uh, Kafka and Kafka Connect right now, plus some internal tooling. We are over 100 million daily streamed records. Um, we have 45 million daily records uh, dealt with in the classic ETL uh, ELT pipelines now uh, with DBT, Kestra, Orchestrator, and Airbyte. Uh, we'll go over that in a few more details uh, afterwards. Uh, we are around five petabytes per day of process warehouse data. Uh, we deal with uh, 1,400 DBT models built daily uh, across different projects, which is, again, why uh, a uh, tool like Open Metadata is going to come in handy. And we um, have over 400 data users and 15 dedicated data analysts that work on this data as well. Um, and in terms of tooling, this is what it looks like right now. So we're all on GCP uh, for the most part. We have a strong level. We have a strong variety for open source tools, so we do deploy a lot of those. So Kestra, one of them, uh, Airbyte also is one of them. Um, on the left side, you'll see all the basically inflows of data. So uh, Kafka, Debezium, Airbyte segment for all that collection and gestion. On the right side is what we use as BI. We're currently transitioning from Periscope to the Omni solution, which looks very very nice. Um, and uh, the teams that uh, deal with the data also use high touch and cargo for activation. Um, so we orchestrate all of that with Kestra, which is again an open source uh, tool, completely self hosted on a GKE cluster. We use with, like teams also still use Zapier because uh, it's a cool no code tool. So you can get going very fast with data. Uh, and cloud function and cloud run, which we do provide the infrastructure for, but we don't own uh, uh, the the sub teams own uh, their automation directly now. Um, again, everything is transformed through DBT, and our observability tools are currently Datadog and Metaplane. Datadog because we do deploy uh, Python regular Python apps, and um, Metaplane because it was here first. <laughs> we 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 discovered we discovered uh, Open Metadata right after, so we we actually used Open Metadata at the beginning as a um, as a proxy for. Uh, caster, which we turned turned off from. Again, I'll I'll talk that after a little bit. And then in discoverability, we use dot uh, get dot dot AI, which is a tool that's it's basically a SQL agent. It helps you um, figure out where your data is. And um, again, this choice was made thanks to Open Metadata, which again uh, Antoine will will talk about. So 
why an open metadata platform? As you, as I talked about, like we have quite a few uh, bytes of data going through our warehouse across different teams, across di different projects. So uh, we basically have like 1400 dbt models to sort through and it was getting really hectic trying to figure out which is, I mean, what is what the column lineage, the dependencies was getting really, uh, really hard to, to read. Um, and the team also at Gorgeous uh, also kind of doubled since entering join, uh, since entering join, I think. And we start like they are starting working on a lot of different projects. Um, and so these teams produce data that we want to track, and we want these analysts to make decisions from. So uh, it started getting uh, it started getting hard to figure out what was going on. Um, and again, we thought about a metadata platform for user tracking because we wanted to know what were the most important models and flag them, uh, basically have automation run through them for QA, for alerting if anything goes wrong. Um, and so why did we end up choosing open metadata? Uh, honestly, during our benchmarking, it was uh, the um, uh, clear winner through all of these three uh, features. So op it was open source because we have a strong bias towards open source. We already deployed uh, open source tools that, that were the, the base for our stack, um, so an orchestrator and an ETL tool. Um, we have a lot of control uh, because we, I mean, we know how to deploy these these tools, right? Um, and uh, we could we could absolutely tailor and custom um, the the features that we wanted or um, any deployment issues that we could deal with. We could we could manage, and had and and just like the 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 raw power of the tool was amazing. Uh, so just like Super thorough lineage features. We had strong collaboration features. That was that was like again we compared to Caster because that was our measuring stick, um, and none of that was there. And especially the very useful API that we really leveraged uh, in a in a couple of projects. So I'll now uh, shut up and uh, mm -hmm. share the boat to Antoine, which will talk about more the technical details uh, of how we implemented open metadata, and um, yeah. Antoine, if you if you're here, let's go. Thank you, Anna. Yeah, yeah. Uh, happy to present again to Open Metadata. We're very happy to to showcase some some applications we have with the tool. Um, so we deployed Open Metadata um, on Kubernetes using uh, most of the managed services we could. Uh, so the Cloud SQL on GCP to manage the database. We are on Elastic Cloud for the Elastic Search. Uh, <clears throat> in, uh, infrastructure and uh, for the ingestion part uh, for everything uh, related to connecting to production databases uh, BigQuery uh, DBT and so on we use Kestra our orchestrator that allows us to uh, have uh, specific deployment policies for example we have dedicated node pool on uh, Kubernetes with white tested uh, IPs to ingest from um, uh, production databases. And also it allows us to not store anything uh, precious um, in terms of credentials uh, in our uh, database. Um, uh, everything is like uh, going through directly secret manager and then uh, the Kestra flows. And we have everything to our form, uh, of course, in the setup. Um, so that's the, that's the best uh, way we, we found so far and um yeah we are talking a lot about Kestra because we we um we are very happy with the tool we're not sponsored from by them like we're used the uh, points with solution but um it's very cool that we could terraform everything regarding the the ingestion flow so you see on the right an example of a flow so it creates a pod a Kubernetes pod you can specify everything related to uh, any spec that you need and um you have all the yaml directly uh configuration that is very explicit and well documented on open metadata documentation and we have like namespaces that split the different uh tools that we ingest so you can go to the next uh, slide ns yeah so the, in terms of coverage so we have mainly bigquery postgres clickhouse kafka we have a custom dashboard integration because we use Periscope that does not have a native one. Probably going to build a new one for Omni. And we have Airbyte and Kafka Connect. 
uh, again, uh, also easy to to build a custom integration. Um, so we are probably going to push for more. I will tell, I'll tell more about this uh, later. Overall, we have like 40, 14K, uh, 45K, sorry, uh, entities. So it's a lot. In terms of usage, we have 10 uh, daily uh, strong uh, data analytics users. So it's mainly people who have like strong knowledge about the, um, the data uh, in general and are building models like dbt models or dashboards or are in embedded teams, but still working on analytics uh, mainly. So they really dig into the platform. They can tag models, they can define tiers and so on. And we found it like super relevant. Um, on the engineer side, uh, adoption was more difficult because we have like Datadog uh, with the data stream monitoring uh, features that is very relevant for streaming. Like they have the volume, the lag, real time, and so on. So of course, this is not the target audience uh, for now. But we found a way to push it for more uh, adoption. Um, and um, yeah, that's it for this slide. Uh, so regarding the API, um, as we said, like we found it like super easy to use and uh, powerful. So we had mainly two application. Uh, as we wanted to bring more adoption of the tool. We, we decided to build the AI discovery agent. Uh, so we used uh, only the, <clears throat> the uh, mainly the Open Metadata API to build the data set and, cr and create this uh, Slack integration where people can now uh, ask directly questions. So we call it like data sensei, but this is just uh, the bot we built internally. And it answers like um, with the, with the information provided into uh, Open Metadata. And the other application is like trying to bring more uh, QA and governance uh, by creating this tier and tagging of our resources. And now we even implemented tests to check like whether correct everything is correctly um, uh, defined in terms of like description, column descriptions, uh, tagging and so on in our dbt so no, no one can merge uh, a new uh, transformation without complying so it's it, it brought a lot of uh, of um, of clarity uh, so the, quickly the infrastructure uh, for the bot so it's mainly uh, open metadata notion api that source the data we built a kind of um, document generation process where we could index this document in a vector database here at Squadrant. And then we store uh, interactions in Cloud SQL and have SAC integration. Uh, so this is the overall, we added some details that we used Vana uh, for the open source uh, framework that they offer for building Slack, uh, Slack agent, agents. Um, but moving forward, we discovered it's a big project. So like you need to have like a new eye and validate the preview sensor of clear history and so on. So it was a build, a big project, sorry. Uh, so we decided to go to a, like a, a company building this. Uh, so in case, in our case, it's dot, but there are plenty, but still open metadata offers us to have a layer, strong layer of uh, discovery and, um, and uh, yeah, can go to the next slide. Yeah, powerful tool. So we have like everything that we need in terms of um, uh, ingestion uh, for the assets and systems we have. Uh, it, saves a lot, it saves a lot of time for a data analyst. Uh, on adoption, we're working hard on uh, building new integration that will be useful for other teams. Uh, so on RevOps team, we have a lot of uh, use, uh, usage in cargo and high touch. So we're likely to build uh, in new integrations for these teams. And for the engineering side, we're going to work more on the Kafka schemas and so on, because these are part that are missing in Datadog and very useful like in um, uh, in systems where uh, you are more uh, more and more adopting Kafka to generate events and and so on. So like outbox events, uh, strategies and so on. So here, uh, Datadog can bring a lot of, um, of uh, clarity. Uh, overall, it's been a very successful year. We're gonna be we've been using the the tool uh, a lot, and it, it helps a lot, a lot with cleaning uh, as well as detecting like models that are not used and um, trying to <laughs> uh, remove some of these uh, thousand of uh, tables that are not always uh, super important but still maintain. 
So yeah, there's a lot of room uh, still, but we're very happy with what we achieved. Um, so that's it. If you have any questions, uh, again, very pleased to, very happy to to present our, our use case at Gorgeous. Awesome. Thanks, Antoine. Thanks, Anas. If you have any questions for the Gorgeous team, feel free to use the to use the chat. And also, as we were saying, everyone is present on Slack, so feel free to also reach out in there. And again, thank you for presenting. It's always super cool to see how people are actually leveraging all of this flexibility and the power of these APIs, no? from actually just ditching Airflow and figuring out what's the right tool for you to handle the ingestion, in this case, Kestra, up to, let's say, powering all of this AI tooling or uh, this GitHub action enforcement and whatnot. So thank you for showing these use cases. A pleasure to have you in the community. I'm super happy that you had the chance to present. So awesome job. Uh, and yeah, can Merci. I answer, I can just answer this question. We tried th that data. Hub. I, I don't know if you have time for answering or should I answer? Yeah, go, go for it, the MetaPlane. Uh, yeah, we tried the, the data hub as well, uh, but we really wanted uh, ingestion managed externally which is not provided by other open source data uh, catalog solutions. Most of them, they are very embedded. And that's, I think it's a real power from uh, open metadata that you can, de uh, you have this decoupled, uh, separated uh, in terms of processes. Uh, so that was it. And also the lineage uh, view was way more uh, heavy in uh, Data Hub. Uh, so it was very slow. At least I felt the app was super slow compared to uh, Open Metadata. It's super fast. There is only one single deployment if you um, if you separate the ingestion process. So it's very um, it's very powerful and super fast. We have a lot of large tables. So as soon as there was a like a table with three hundred columns, it was just starting uh, going crazy. So.